Hello and welcome back everybody to lesson number six in this FS Academy Navigators training series. Today's lesson is all about air traffic control and how to communicate. So let's jump in. to introduce the use of controlled airspace so that we can incorporate overflying airfields and transiting control zones into our routes. We're flying westbound just to the north of Manchester in the UK. This is a particularly busy area for flying with both small airfields and international airports all seamlessly working together making it a great place for this exercise. Maintaining 1,900 feet, we're on our way to a motorway junction, which is a VRP named Swinton Interchange. When permitted by ATC, the ability to fly through a control zone, CTR, known as a zone transit, can cut off many miles off of your route, as you can now take a more direct course. Depending on commercial traffic levels, ATC does not always have the capacity to accommodate light aircraft such as ourselves, but on quiet days we have better chances. The first thing we're going to look at is flying through the Aerodrome Traffic Zone, ATZ, which surrounds Barton, a busy and popular grass airstrip that is uncontrolled but provides an information service. In order to speak with Barton information, we need to tune their radio frequency into our communication radio. Use the inner and outer knob of the COM1 radio to set a frequency of 120.255 into the standby window. Here we go. Now press the COM1 swap button to make 120.255 the active frequency. There are varying levels of ATC service at airfields. Barton has an information service, so there is a tower at the airfield, but they do not provide air traffic control clearances other than taxi instructions, but can pass information such as the runway in use and any known airfield traffic. We will call Barton information now and advise that we wish to fly through the Barton ATZ. Barton information, Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie for overhead transit routing Swinton to Thelwall, 1,900 feet. Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie, Barton information, good afternoon. No known airfield traffic, Manchester QNH 1007. QNH 1007, Roger, Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie. That's all that's needed at an airfield with an information service. If they had advised us of heavy traffic conditions, with lots of aircraft joining and leaving the circuit, we would likely route around the ATZ, but as conditions are quiet, we can transit through without trouble. We're going to pass through the Barton ATZ en route to the Thelwall Viaduct VRP, which is where the M6 motorway crosses the Manchester Shipping Canal. There's Barton right there. And the shipping canal looks to be right behind it. As this is a busy area for light traffic, with Manchester and Liverpool airports close together, it would be difficult to accommodate a large number of zone transits per day, or make all light aircraft take a huge diversion around both control zones. 
To alleviate this, a special low-level route was introduced for light VFR aircraft only that runs north-south between the two major airports, but with an altitude limitation of 1,300 feet maximum. Known as the Corridor, the eastern boundary is marked by the Thelwall Viaduct, so before we reach there, we need to be at no higher than 1,300 feet. Please now take us down to 1,100 feet to comply with this. All right. Good. Now we're at the correct altitude for the VFR corridor. Continue towards Thelwall. Now we're at... reaching Thalwall, we will follow the corridor with some stepping stones. Aim for the industrial estate at the disused airfield of Stretton, turning left to heading 204. 204, here we go. Now that we are in the corridor, keep an extra strong lookout for other traffic, as this is a major route for VFR flight. Alright, traffic is clear at the moment. Reaching Stretton now, which was a former Royal Navy Air Station, also known as HMS Black Cap, which operated as a major aircraft maintenance location until it closed in 1958. Next, we'll fly heading 208 towards a small triangular shaped town called Sandy Way, before heading towards the lake at Winsford Flash. ETE to Sandy Way is five minutes. Okay, set the timer. Altitude good, heading good, and speed good. There we go. Had to turn a little bit more to get it to Objective As up. we are so close to the edge of the Manchester CTR, it is sensible to monitor the Manchester radar frequency. Monitor means listen to without having to transmit. Tune 118.58 into the COM1 standby window. Press the swap button to make it the active frequency. And swapped. Great, now we can listen to any other traffic around Manchester to maintain our situational awareness. We can indicate to ATC that we are monitoring their frequency by setting a frequency monitoring code or listening squawk into the transponder. Code 7366 is used for Manchester radar, so now please set 7366 into the transponder. Now ATC can see that even though we are outside of their airspace, 
We are listening to their frequency, so they can call us if they need to. Here we can see the distinctive triangular shape of Sandy Way, which is a useful feature to avoid misidentifying. Make a left turn towards Winsford Flash on heading 138. It's a lake located within the town of Winsford and should be easy to spot. All right. And that was about four minutes and not five, so. We can see Winsford flash from here as the lake is reflecting the sky, making it easily visible between the built up areas. There are a couple of levels of assistance that UK ATC can offer us whilst outside of controlled airspace. They can give us a basic service where we will be advised of any known activity in nearby airspace, but only while controller workload allows. We need to maintain our own traffic separation. A higher level, the traffic service may be available, where ATC will guarantee to advise us of oncoming traffic, but won't provide separation instructions. We still need to keep our own separation. Continue straight ahead, which keeps us on a course to the south of the Manchester CTR. We're going to contact Radar now and request a zone transit. Manchester Radar, Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, request zone transit and basic service. Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, standby. We don't respond to a standby instruction but continue to listen for the controller to call us back. Now that we have made contact, it does not yet mean that we are permitted into the control zone, so we must remain outside whilst we wait. Golf Alpha Charlie, pass your message. ATC have abbreviated our call sign to Golf Alpha Charlie, so we can now do the same to ease communication. Golf Alpha Charlie, Cesta 152, Winsford Flash at 1,100 feet on QNH 1007. Request transit to Barton. Golf Alpha Charlie, Squawk 7352. 7352, Golf Alpha Charlie. ATC have assigned us a new transponder code of 7352, so set this into our transponder. Golf Alpha Charlie, proceed Jodrell to Alderney, not above 1,300 feet VFR. Report to Alderney. Basic service, Jodrell to Alderney, not above 1,300 feet VFR. Wilco, Golf Alpha Charlie. It's good news. We're cleared into the Manchester zone. Keeping our current Ooh. altitude of 1,100 feet, turn left towards the Lovell Space Telescope at Jodrell Bank. Turn left. Guys, still we're going to pass overhead Jodrell Bank and then continue to Alderney Hill, which is as far as ATC have cleared us to go. We are now under ATC instructions, so we have to comply with our clearances so that we can safely slot between commercial traffic.
Jodrell Bank is home to the Lovell Telescope, a UNESCO heritage site. Being a steerable dish, the telescope can be pointed to any visible point of the night sky. At 250 feet diameter, this is the third largest steerable telescope in the world. It has changed purposes several times throughout its lifespan and is still in use today for a wide range of topics in astrophysics. As we pass Jodrell Bank, we can see the hill at Alderney Edge up ahead at slightly to the right of the nose. Head there next. Alright, we'll hang alright. As we are never sure of the routes that ATC will permit us to take through their airspace, we do not have a nav log for this portion of our flight. Golf Alpha Charlie Alderney. Golf Alpha Charlie, Roger, one right orbit for inbound traffic. Report complete. Right orbit, Wilco, Golf Alpha Charlie. ATC wants us to circle here to sequence us with the landing traffic flow. Start a 360 turn to the right. Starting a 360. Alpha Charlie, proceed over the runway 23 right threshold en route to Sail Water Park. 23 right threshold to Sail, Golf Alpha Charlie. Okay, that's the green light for us to cross over the runways at Manchester Airport. Fly overhead the landing end of runway 23 right. We'll get a great view of the airport as we pass overhead. Okay. In 1930, Barton was actually originally planned to be the location for Manchester's main airport, but the ground was found to be too boggy for the larger aircraft in development at the time, so this area was selected instead. Manchester Airport was formerly RAF Ringway. Today it operates as a busy international airport, supporting around 7 million passengers annually. the threshold. I can see it now, visually. I don't see any traffic. carry on straight ahead to the VRP at Sail Water Park, a lake dedicated to open water swimming. Lots of yellow trucks down there. Yeah. Bunch of them. As we near Sail Water Park, we can see the city of Manchester up ahead, along with Manchester United's football stadium, Old Trafford, just to the right of the nose. We have navigated with both the stepping stone and dead reckoning method, and gotten to grips with the radios and ATC. Next, we're heading to Sweden for a colder climate to see how your visual references change in the winter months. Sounds fun. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for this one. Thank you for following along. I will catch you on the next one.